You're watching the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. Salah to settle it! In front of the COP! Hey guys, welcome back to episode 92 of Hot Copics, the famous COP TV podcast, episode 92, as I said. Myself, AGT, we've got Mario, and if you're wondering where we are right now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and Mario, and Giach, how are you? Um, welcome to the brand new The Cop TV studio, right? Round of applause, why not? Go Absolutely, on. we Go deserve on, it, we deserve it, a proper applause. Well done, The Cop TV. Thank you. This is uh, the new home of the Hot Copics podcast of myself and Mario. We're going to add little bits and bobs um, yeah. throughout the, the time that we've got the studio. It is ours, so we can film here whenever we want. Um, yeah, we're going to look to add a few different bits and bobs, uh, a few different props, and uh, make it a real homely set, Mario. How do you feel? Are you, are you, do you feel welcomed? Yet? I feel great, bro. It's nice, isn't it? I feel great. It's completely like... Uh, I can't believe it's our studio, you know. We it's can, beautiful, isn't it? We can do whatever we want, so it's good. It's beautiful. It's a new start. It's a new start. It's a new start, firstly. So, we have to carry on like that, you know, lads? Bigger and better. That's what we're trying exactly. to do on the But we can't do it if you're not pressing like on the video. Exactly. Can we, Jack? No, so it's algorithm, algorithm, algorithm. Like the video just before we get started on all the hot topics. We've got some juicy ones as well. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already on YouTube. And if you're listening on audio oh, platforms, geez. you have to. Um, five star rates and like it. Yes. No, follow it. Follow it, follow it. Oh, ah. Every week. He's Every, never got that No, right no, either. I got it, but... Uh, he's never got it yeah. right. But if you are listening on audio, you know the drill by now. Follow the podcast <laughs> on whatever believe. you're listening uh, on. And then obviously give us a little cheeky five-star rating. If you're enjoying the show, as I said, new studio, new start. Um, let's get into the first hot topic of the day. That is Ange Postacoglu. Last night, we saw Chelsea beat Tottenham Ooh. 4-1 at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. An unbelievable game. Yeah. So much stuff happened, Mario. What did you make of the game? It, you know, it was just one of the craziest games I've ever seen. Um, I watched the highlights. I didn't watch live the game. I watched the highlights and it was completely mess. All the referees, all the situation, it was crazy that game. Uh, to be honest, Alex, I finally expect uh, Tottenham to, to lose a game because uh, they, they, they were in bits and before, before the Chelsea uh, last night. So this is something that I think from now with all my respect for Tottenham, but they're going to start so dropping points game by game. And uh, obviously, as a fair season, Postecoglou is doing very well. He's a good manager. Uh, people like him, all the players, they saying just good things about him. Well, they were up until last night. Till last night, exactly. <laughs> the, the narrative has maybe changed a little bit. Um, when you lost, everything changed. <laughs> you know, he said, you know, when he was a kid, he looked up to referees as policemen. You know, he said, especially when... Um, the VAR decision with us happened that mistakes are part of the game you've kind of got to take it as it comes you'll win some you'll lose some he doesn't ask the referee what the rules are he was very open by saying how respectful he is of the referee but then last night um, it was everything opposite to what he said after the Klopp statement that we put out um, he went on to say how he's got you know the utmost respect um, for respecting officials you know you've just got to accept it but then there's a clip actually from when he was at Celtic when he did have a, a very strong opinion on the referees. So, you know, I feel, I feel like, and I'll ask you what you think, and especially at home, when we put the statement out after the VAR, we were told to get on with it. It's embarrassing. No one really backed us. To be fair, in his initial statement, Arteta said, you know, maybe we could have deserved a bit more. But now that Arsenal have put out a statement with their VAR discrepancies as well, you can't, as a Liverpool fan, you kind of think, well, yeah, this is what we did, and you all laughed at us. Exactly. And especially Ange Postecoglou, mate. Exactly. You know, you can you can cry all you want, mate. You know, the two red cards, you deserve them, mate. But anyway, what do you think of it? Because it seems like everyone was laughing at us when we did it, but then it happens to your team, and, you're, and you want to put a statement out. Where do you stand on what everything has happened? 
It's exactly when you when you have this situation against you and you're winning the game like Tottenham did against us in the most unfair way possible. And obviously that game, the refereeing, all the situation, everything happened. That was like the the the, the biggest disgrace in the English football history. Uh, that's the biggest statement that's happened. Obviously, uh, same like you say, Alex. All the all the teams, the big teams, they laugh at us. They say, "Oh, Liverpool is always the same." They complain, but then it's, when it happens to you, you do the same, uh, and you leave statements like this, uh, and you're not, you know, laughing anymore. Uh, and you understood finally our position and what we felt that that horrible day in uh, in the not just for Liverpool supporters. That was the horrible, the most horrible day for for the English Premier League. Uh, yeah. So yeah, they can understand us. And what we felt that day, just now, just now. Yeah, the VAR uh, kind of ongoing um, criticism is deserved because you see massive mistakes made by the likes of Anthony Taylor. He gets demoted to the championship, makes an even worse mistake in the championship. Yeah. Did you see the video? No, I didn't. He gave a penalty for literally nothing in the Preston Coventry game. I was doing it on DR Sports Saturday Football Show. So instead of getting demoted again to League One, mm -hmm. he's now the ref for Chelsea Man City in the Premier League on Sunday. Okay, that's boss. So good process, lads. Yes, you know, it's, sure. it's, it's, fair enough. <laughs> you're basically rewarding them in the end for getting this stuff wrong. So listen, it's going to happen every week until it, it gets sorted. The VAR argument that goes on every single week. How do you solve it? In your head and at home, how do you finally just draw a line under this? I know it's the million billion dollar question. But when you're seeing the ball potentially not go over the full line in the Newcastle-Arsenal game, what, how do you feel about it? Or and how can we fix it if we can? Firstly, I want to say that Anthony Taylor, he can go to Rome uh, on holidays, <laughs> even if he wants. Because all the Roma supporters, all Jose Mourinho and all this stuff, they're ready to, to give him a proper battle. So, first of all, uh, I thought he's a good uh, referee, to be honest. But in the last two, two seasons... He's doing many, many mistakes and like stupid mistakes. I think, Alex, we reach a level of the English football that we've got everything possible, VRR, all the checks, the screen during the games. All the referees, all the VRR, they can't do any more mistakes because they introduce all this stuff, all the VRR, all the, you know, uh, the replays to avoid the mistakes. And now it's even getting worse because Liverpool Tottenham is happened uh, uh, one month ago. Other days happened with uh, yesterday with Chelsea, uh, the day before uh, Arsenal and Newcastle. Every game almost is hoping something that... Especially Wolves as well. Yeah. The last three weeks, Wolves have had it really it's, bad. I don't think it was a penalty smart. against Brentford. Lewis Dunk's goal at Everton should have stood for Brighton as well. They yeah. should have won the game. So it's not just our team. And I think now fans, after seeing the Arsenal decisions, are saying, well, actually, maybe Liverpool were right, which I think they should have thought at the time when we put our statement out. But anyway, let us know what you think of the AR. It's boring to talk about. Yeah, it's every it single week. And Andrew Postacoglu, a bit of a hypocrite of what he said in the past and what he said last night as well. So He's going to finish sixth anyway. Oh, yeah. No, Spurs, he will spurs it up. There's no, no doubt about it at some I mean, point. They will. Um, let's be clear, you know. <laughs> I haven't seen you since the Luton game. Oh. So let's talk about that. Um, a one all draw in the end. I mean... Oh. Tough to take when you see the chances that we missed. It's tough to take, Alex. Tough to talk about because obviously he's my guy. He wasn't the only player, you know what I'm talking about. Of course, I know. That missed on, on uh, Sunday. But um, he just needs more finesse. I feel like, especially the one that he missed from underneath the bar, in my head, it's like every shot that he has from maybe inside the box, it's a smash. He tries to hit it as far and as hard as he can. And, and blast it past the keeper. I just want to see a bit more finesse because yes. Luis Suarez could do those goals. Torres could do those goals where you smash it. But I want to see him bend it past the keeper on the floor. I want to see a drilled Curious across scene. finish. Yeah, exactly. When he was through on goal, Salah put him in. He goes near post, high. Go far post, low, and drill it across the keeper. That's what I want to see. There was a big Same. lack of finesse. And realistically, he had seven shots. Looking back, he should have scored four of those. And we draw the game one all. It, it, it's hard to take if you think about it. Uh, to be honest, after 24 hours after the game, I didn't want to think about the mm. game. I just didn't like... It was like, oh, let's cancel it for 24 hours. Then 
uh, start to, to think about it. Because, Alex, it was, it was very, very hard to take. I mean, like, when we create, basically... I remember I watched it in the pub just myself. And, uh, Which pub? In Macaulay's, in oh, on Macaulay's. the concert square. Uh, and after 25 minutes, we had, like, six, seven chances. I know. And Nunez had at least, like, five uh, most of them he created for the for the good like you know 20 25 yard shots and stuff like that but that chance when Mo Salah give him Trent cross Mo Salah give him in front of the net mate you can do that we love you we support you he knows that uh, for us he's uh, the new Liverpool uh, star in the future but mate if you want to be a star you can miss stuff like that especially when we talking about a game that can uh, that miss, it affects all game. Mm. Because if you score that goal, one nil up, that's it. That's it. Finish. He uh, hit the bar as well, remember? Before yeah, the bar. Even, even the bar. I mean, he wasn't lucky. But mate, you have to score from that. That pass, Trent's pass was belter. Brilliant. Perfect pass. Incredible vision. You have to stop it and score. But even that one, he goes high, top right corner. Why? Low and hard. Exactly. The, that's the exactly. ruthless striker that we want to see. And exactly. I think... If you can add 10 to 15 of those goals where instead of uh, and smashing yeah. it and it's pings off the bar and it's yeah. chaos and you don't know what's going on, just pass it in the net exactly. in the corner. It's you're you're going to turn into a from a 20 goal a season striker to a 35 goal a season striker 100%. if you just refine that that finishing, that finesse that we've seen. We're not asking you to be Thierry Henry. No. But if you're getting five chances a game, which you will, by the way, even in these games, tough away games, smaller teams, low block, we still will create five to six to seven to eight chances per game. And if he's our number nine up front, expect three or four of those chances to fall to you. If in your head, and again, who am I to tell Darwin Nunez? I haven't played football at this level, but just from a fan's perspective, trying to be as honest and open as I can. If in your head before a game you think, right, I'm going to have four chances today, I have to score at least two. Darwin Nunez hasn't scored a hat-trick yet for Liverpool. I know. Has he scored? Has he scored a brace against Man United. Man United. I think that might be the only one. And again, no, against a uh, Southampton. Maybe the last South, game. Yes. yes before the, the last World game Cup. before the World Cup. I remember it. I remember it. Brace and uh, probably once more. But I don't listen, remember. I, I don't want to criticize him because Mo no, Salah no. didn't have a good game. Yeah. Gakpo missed a chance. Um, there was other players that probably should have contributed a little bit more. Um, the goal that they scored was really good breakaway. We were caught out. But what I wanted to now bring it on to was um, obviously Luis Diaz's goal, right? That gets us a point. We might look back on this and say, this is hot topic number two, by the way. We might look back on this and say what a point that was um, on the grand scheme of things. But when Diaz scored that goal, lifted up his shirt, libertad para papa. I mean, yeah, football man. really goes out the window. And even the Luton players, to be yeah. fair to them, were, were super sympathetic to the situation. It was, uh, I mean, like, obviously, uh, we equalised in the, in the 95th minute, uh, which is, I, I couldn't even think about to loss against, uh, no. against Luton. Uh, nothing against Luton, but it just, oh, the game we played, the chances we create, we couldn't lose. Absolutely no way. Uh, so, Luchito Diaz, one chance, one goal. A very, very special player, a unique player. Um, he, to be honest, before the goal he scored against Luton, for seven games, he haven't scored in, uh, in the Premier League. Uh, but he's, you know, our man. We love him. Uh, we can rely to him. And he had that chance, he scored. Uh, we've been lucky, obviously, to score because I have to mention something as well, apart of Luis Diaz, apart of his celebration that was heartbreaking. I mean, like, uh, um, ev everyone, we, we, we think about his dad and every day I'm looking uh, on um, the news on Google that probably he's going to be released and stuff like that. We hoping, we pray for, for his dad. But the assist Harvey Elliott made because... You know, I have a little bit of criticism about um, Harvey Elliott. For me, he's one of those players, probably the only one that so far he didn't show that he's a level, like that world-class level to play for Liverpool. But his impact of the game was boss. And it's every game. No. No, this season, it's every game he's come on, he's done really well. Newcastle and, and Luton. Yeah, but uh, at the same time, what does he need to do to get a start? And let me bring that on to the McAllister situation now because, oh. listen, we lost points against Luton. It's a bad result, but the reactionary kind of... Some people's reactions to this calling out McAllister, calling out Nunez, I mean, it's ridiculous. I'm not saying they're match-going fans, by the way. I'm not saying that these people who are saying this stuff are 
you know, I'm, I'm not even going to use the quote top reds, but you know what I mean? Of Internet course, I know what you mean. don't really go to the game and understand the culture behind really of supporting course. the players. And I didn't like to see that. But now, um, McAllister got booked. He will now miss the he Brentford, Brentford game Hollywood on Sunday, up. which again rules him out until the Man City game after the international break. He's been playing in the six. I didn't like the fact that he was the first, well, the, the one closest to their breakaway goal. We all had all our players up for the other corner. He's the one trying to break back and, and defend Chong's goal. Uh, and I didn't like to see that because that's where you need a number six. Yeah. Running back with your shirt, with exactly. facing your own goal, you need legs. I would have preferred in that situation at Endo or Gravenberg, which leads me to my next question now. Who starts on Sunday? Or let's forget that. We've got to lose on Thursday, which we're doing a separate match preview for. But in terms of a number six, the next Premier League game, we won't have McAllister. To, so is this finally the time where a Harvey... Where a Curtis, where Endo comes in and gets minutes? Uh, that's a good question because I'm definitely not going to go for Gravenberg as a number six. No? No, as a number six, no. Probably uh, I'm going to put him in the start 11, but not as a number six. Probably Endo uh, or Jones, Curtis Jones, before the, the red card against, uh, against Tottenham. He played a couple of games as a number six. Yeah, let's, let, let's say as a fake number six. Because he's not, um, he's not a proper number six. So uh, probably I'm going to give uh, a chance to, to Jones. Uh, but obviously he's not that number six. We need. It's not Fabinho. Let's say the perfect number six for Liverpool in the last five years was Fabinho. Of course. If Fabinho was in that uh, situation with the counter-attack for Luton when they score our corner, then counter-attack, if he was there. He gets a yellow card. Gets a yellow card. That's, that's 100% would have been a goal. Uh, but we had... We had no more Fabinho, so that was a goal. We need a player like Fabinho, mate. Uh, probably Endo is doing well. I don't know if he's ready to be involved in the in the Premier League from the first minutes against Brentford. Probably, but he's the I only one player him. to I put him. him. Only one player to put him. So I'm go for him. Mm, just uh, to wrap up on the Luton game, we also um, learned that both Liverpool um, and Luton have released statements regarding the tragedy chanting towards Liverpool supporters. And, you know, it's a pretty disappointment statement for, for Luton. They were singing, uh, always the victims, it's never your fault. Which ah, is OK, yeah. Like, yeah without yeah, yeah. needing to yeah. shout the word or chant Hillsborough, yeah. we know it's about Hillsborough because of, of the course. connotations, the wrong connotations yeah. that kind of came with it. I'm going to read out this statement now. I, I think it's a super weak statement. But it says, Luton Town Football Club is saddened by reports of inappropriate chanting towards Liverpool supporters. The atmosphere, uh, the atmosphere inside the stadium was electric for the most part of the game in which we came close to pulling off one of the results of the season. It's got nothing to do with it, don't need to know that. Whilst we do not wish to dampen the atmosphere at our home ground in any way, we are extremely disappointed that a small number of supporters soured the occasion with chants that may be interpreted as being in relation to tragedies that have... Come on. It is, of course we know it is, that have affected Liverpool in the past. The club condemns any kind of chanting that knowingly seeks to divide and our safety and security team launched an internal investigation at the earliest opportunity. It goes on to say, um, we are reviewing CCTV and media footage from the match and we will speak to witnesses to identify individuals who have taken part. Any perpetrators could face stadium bans and potential criminal prosecutions. And it does go on to say that you know, they would wholeheartedly apologise. Um, I mean, it's not just Luton. And fair play to Jamie Carragher for calling it out on, on the actual uh, uh, coverage by Sky Sports. He's been involved with some charities around Hillsborough and the Bradford tragedy, the one that happened to Leeds fans. You know, it goes without saying that if you're the kind of person that would sing a song like that, fully well knowing the connotations and the meaning behind it, then in my opinion, you should face a stadium ban. I agree. And if we're, you know, hosting a team like who have said these chants in the past, the Luton, et cetera, et cetera, cut their ticket half, to cut their ticket allocation in half to come to Anfield. That's how you really stamp this out of the game. You ban them from the stadium and then they could potentially go, you know, be sp spoken to by the, the, the authorities as well. I agree. I, I agree with you, Alex. I mean, like uh, in 2023, it's, it's, it's embarrassing to still, you know, during the games, people try to get attention on them and, you know, they're chanting stuff like that. And they're singing below. Feed the Scousers, uh, Poverty Shaming. Have you seen Luton? Have you seen the ground around Luton? 11,000? It's like a war zone. 
Eleven thousand. How many uh, it's like, capacity? Yeah, eleven thousand. It's like eleven thousand. It's even it's 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 even in smaller than the, than any roads um, stand. So it's you know if you, I hate talk about that because it's something it's that still it's horrible. It's, it's disgusting in twenty twenty three with all the stuff we talk. We're still talking about the tragedy happened uh, thirty years ago. Even uh, some people I remember past years uh, chanting about like Munich Nazi fifty eight against Man United stuff 68, with uh, six fifty. 68. Yeah, 68, exactly. So uh, it's just leave, leave this stuff outside the ground. Leave it. Don't bring it inside. Football is joy. Football is, is just, especially the Premier League. I know in Italy, in Spain, in Spain unfortunately, a um, situation with racism, it's still happening. Uh, we know that, which is, is still is disgusting as well. But uh, the racists, we can't stop them. We can't stop them. Especially in the countries like Italy and Spain, because nobody check you in in Italy, so you can be racist every game. But in England, that is is different. You got CCTV in every single point, in every single block of the stands, so you can check what people who is singing stuff like that. And simple as that, give him a ban forever from every single game in in the English football. Give him a ban, and that's it. We're gonna sort all this situation with bans. It's not acceptable, Alex. No, it's inhumane. And it's those using disasters to gain banter on. points. What's the, what's the point? You need to know that your words are impacting the lives of real people who experience these tragedies. You know, the people that died at Hillsborough, etc., Munich. It is totally disgusting. And, and it's your responsibility as a football fan, as a match-going fan. If someone says that, call them out. Because it's literally not going to go anywhere until that happens. So, listen... It is what it is. It's got it's got to be eradicated out of the game as soon as possible. And, and it's sick and twisted to think that someone would sing and, and make jokes about that kind of stuff. Anyway, let's move on. Um, we mentioned we still need probably another number six. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but the Copa Libertadores final, Fluminense, they won. Andre Trindade. And Andre Trindade uh, was uh, a very good player in that game, picked up the trophy. But today... We're hearing that Fulham are apparently leading the race to Ooh. sign Andre. Ooh. Liverpool looking at different options to improve the midfield, while still also looking at Andre as well. I mean, Fulham, maybe Palina goes in January Probably. to buy Munich. Maybe Andre goes to Fulham. But how do you feel about that? One, do we need him? And two, should we be able to get him over Fulham? And then someone else might come in, you never know. Uh, if I'm under Trindade and Liverpool wants to get me, I'm going straight away. Uh, not because I'm supportive, but because the you know uh, the charm of Liverpool Football Club is just incredible. Mm. And uh, uh, we need a number six mate. I don't know if he's the right player, if he's that what we need, but we need a proper number six because. Uh, I mean, I love McAllister, I love Hendo. Hendo is still not ready, uh, but we're going to risk him against Brentford. I love McAllister, but it's not his position, mate. We can see that in every game. It's not his natural position. So we need someone in January. We definitely need to improve in that position and get someone ready to play straight away. Straight away, we need someone. So if Andre Trindade is the first choice for Liverpool, let's go for it. Very simple, Alex. Mm. I it don't very think... very simple, but they can Yeah, be... exactly. It's not it's quite confusing. It's simple, but it's not simple. It's simple, but not simple. But <laughs> you'd like to think that if we can't get him, there's someone else being lined up. But that, to me, tells me that Polinho is, is going to buy Munich if Fulham are leading yeah. the race. Yeah. Let us know in the comments um, what you, you think about that one. Speaking of another midfielder, another hot topic today was the fact that Netherlands manager Ronald Koeman, have you seen this one today? Um, he basically pulled out of the Netherlands under-21 squad back in September to focus on his move to liverpool Gravenberg, which sparked a bit of discontent with, with Ronald Koeman. He kind of said he didn't pick him for the next two squads. But now we're hearing that the exile is over. Apparently the punishment is over. Ronald Koeman, obviously former Everton manager as yeah. well. <laughs> we know him very um, well. <laughs> but he did say before the pre-selection was announced, I called him and said that he was not there. But if he continues to develop in this way, he will join the Dutch national team. I told him that I want to do it with the same group as much as possible in the coming international match. We are going to qualify, which means we'll have practice matches in March and June. And then the Euros, he's a midfielder who is definitely in the picture if he plays more. That was already the case at Bayern, but if you saw him every weekend that he did not play or came on for five minutes, then it does not make sense to select him. 
We also saw Nigel de Jong, who is now uh, the technical director of the Dutch FA, was at AXA last week to have a look at Graven Birch as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's probably the right thing to do, maybe, to turn down that under-21 call and, and focus on your new move. But it looks like Coleman's got over his little bee in his bonnet now. Uh, oh, definitely. We, we saw an uh, uh, incredible improvement from, from Gravenberg. Uh, uh, let's say it in the Dutch way. Gravenberg. Gravenberg, Gravenberg yeah. yeah. Um, a massive improvement from, from, from him from, you know, uh, since he joined Liverpool. And uh, he's a different player. Obviously, he's not number six player. He can't play number six. Well, uh, he can, know. but it's yeah. like, same, same like McAllister. He can, but he's not going to give his best. Uh, I, like, I like Gravenberg. I'm honest with you. I very, very, uh, I like a lot uh, him. And uh, the impact he made for Liverpool is just, is just uh, great. He's a fabulous player, 21 years old, massive lad, very quick, uh, especially when he gets the ball. Uh, his pace in the first like 15, 20 meters is impressive. So, if Kuman wants to get him in the national team, good for him. Otherwise, he's gonna get rest and be ready for Liverpool. Uh, yeah, I think exactly. he thinks that was like a punishment, but we were kind like, of. yeah, sweet. Yeah. It makes him a bit exactly. more relaxed <laughs> and ready to go for us. So and Kuman is a really blue soul. Yeah, he's bitter, isn't he? He's been in um, Amalia a few times. What did you make of the news today? <laughs> That's true. That yeah. He's what? He's been in Amalia a few times. Has he? Kuman, yeah. yeah? Five, six times? Yeah. Five or six. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He's a big class. He needs cow's like own? proper scrum lasagna, probably. I don't two know. Two cow's own. Just yeah, to do two challenges just for himself. Yeah. <laughs> back to back challenge. We've got no space here, guys. <laughs> guys like the party? <laughs> um, <laughs> what did you make of the news that, again, this Sunday, Liverpool versus Brentford is not going to be on TV? Instead, on the Saturday, you're going to have Newcastle again, 5.30 on TV. That's the sixth time that Newcastle have been on Sky Sports, 5.30 on a Saturday, by the way. Six. And obviously, you've got the Man City-Chelsea game at half four as well on Sunday, which is on TV. Uh, light's just gone off there, Jack, but should be all right. Um, but what do you make of that? Liverpool, they're not showing us much love, the Skies and the TNTs at the I minute. We're not really on... TV as much as we should be, especially on the weekends. We're on it, obviously, every most Thursdays, but what's going on there? I can't believe, seriously, I can understand once uh, not going on the, on the telly live, but this is like third or the fourth time. Don't call it anymore Super Sunday because it's not Super Sunday if you don't show Liverpool 2 o'clock. I understand uh, the rule, like uh, the game's Saturday 3 o'clock, you're not going to show it on the telly to encourage people to go on the stadium. And fair enough, I agree 100%. But the game's at Sunday, you have to show it. 2 o'clock, half 4, whatever time is it. I don't know why Sky and TNT or BT or whatever is it, they don't show Liverpool. I don't understand what's the sense. So if you play every season, let's say, in Europa League on Thursday and we play uh, so, uh, Sunday then, what about that? People not going to watch Liverpool? No, I know. Oh, but uh, it's, the, it's, not, it's not Super Sunday Obviously, anymore. a lot of the time, you know, we do play on Thursdays. So technically for rest, you have to be playing on a Sunday. But give us a game on telly. What happened exactly. to the 2 o'clock and the 4.30 on TV? I Why can't know. we have both? It's got to the point where it's a bit farcical. Um, so anyway, listen, it is what it is. We can't change no, it. But it it's embarrassing. Find a way. But they're making us not go down the legal route, if you know what I'm saying. Eh? Um, but anyway, it is what it is. Let us know in the comments what you think about that one. Liverpool aren't on TV as much as they should be. So there you go. There's all your hot topics for this week, episode 92. We are going to strive to get this live for you again. We just need the Wi-Fi to be installed here. But let us know in the comments. What more can we add? We've got the champion's flag there. We've got some books. Shout out to Keo for giving us this book, My First Liverpool Songs. We've got the mug, autobiographies there. A few shirts. We can bring a few more shirts in. I believe we've got a signed shirt that we can bring in as well. I do. So let us know in the comments what you want to see us do in the studio. We've got more space so we can... We can play around with a bit of space, but this is the Hot Topics set up. This has been episode 92. If you've made it this far on YouTube, congratulations. Give them a round of applause. Give them a round of applause for getting this far. Yep, well done to you. You're loyal. That's what we like. Make sure you smash that like button. As I said, algorithm, algorithm, algorithm. It helps us to help you. So do it for us. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let us know in the comments all your thoughts on the Hot Topics today. If they're listening on audio platforms, Mario... 
they have to follow it and give it five star rate. Oh, perfect. He's done and it. play Absolutely. golf as well. And play golf. I did play golf on Sunday. I loved it, mate. Best round of my life, actually. Boss. Uh, we'll be back next week during the international break. Hey, Mano. We might have James Redmond back with us as well for a little special one off. So we'll see how we get on with that. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to the game on Sunday. As I said, we're going to record another match preview for the Toulouse game now. So go and watch that too. And we'll see you very soon. Take care. All the best. Mario Forza. Forza, vamos! Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Cop TV. The voice of, of football's, football's most, most famous, famous stand. stand.